In episodes one and two of this series, I detailed first the excavation and pouring of the concrete for the curb, followed by the plumbing and fittings for the tank, so we could start collecting rainwater. In this episode, I'll build the cedar and corrugated metal surround that sits on the concrete curb. This curb acts as a retaining wall for the gravel base of the rainwater tank. And then later I'll connect the tank to a pump for our garden irrigation. <laughs> We decided to dress up the tank and surround it halfway with a cedar fence and galvanized corrugated panels. This is mainly for aesthetic reasons and not specifically a requirement for a rainwater tank. The tank is very prominent at the front of the property, so we wanted it not to be such a focus, or the first thing you notice from the road. We have a few other projects on the go that have the combination of red cedar and galvanized metal, and we really like that look. So here's the bare concrete curb filled with pea gravel. The fence surround is constructed from 4x4 posts that are attached to galvanized post saddles. I embed anchor bolts in the concrete for these. There are five posts in total. Between the posts I have a bottom rail made from a 2x6, then a mid rail and top rail made from a 2x4. After the design is done in SketchUp, I can start cutting the parts. I have some cedar milled from trees that fell on our property, and these have been air drying for a few years. I had them milled full dimension, and I really liked the rough sawn look. With a square curb, I was able to design all the individual parts to be the same size. All the posts are the same length, as well as all the rails are the same length. And this made cutting everything straightforward and pretty simple. So I'll start by cutting all the 4x4s first. The post saddles are designed for a nominal 4x4, which is actually 3.5 inches square, so I need to trim down the bottoms of these posts. And then break off these wafer pieces and finish with a chisel. and I'll test fit one just to be sure. When we poured the concrete curb, I embedded some anchor bolts to hold these adjustable post saddles. I like these as they lift the post off the concrete by an inch, and they are slightly adjustable. I find that my anchor bolt placement can be off a bit, so this really helps. Next, I'll cut the 2x6s for the bottom rails, and then the 2x4s for the mid and top rails. To flush mount the galvanized corrugated panels, I cut a rabbit in the top and bottom rails. And I can use my portable table saw for this. With all the parts cut, I'll roll on a coat of stain. This is a one-coat, sickened, semi-transparent stain. I think the color is called butternut. I used this same stain on the garden pavilion I built a while back. I add a few extra coats to the tops and bottoms of the posts, and to the ends of the rails. The next day, I can start to put everything together. I'll be toe screwing the rails into the posts, and that's good enough for what is essentially a fencing project. A single screw through the post saddle holds the bottom of the post in place while I clamp temporary braces to two sides. Then plumb the posts with a spirit level. 
and then I'll repeat that for the second post. Blocks clamped to the posts support the rails. And a long pipe clamp pulls the posts together as I run in the screws. Working my way down the post, I'll next add the middle rail. Then the 2x6 bottom rail can be added. I had my roofing supplier cut these panels to five foot lengths, and I designed this surround fence so the posts were set apart about an inch greater than the panel width. So I didn't need to do any metal trimming for this, and I really like that. Then management comes by to see how the first corrugated panel looks in the fence frame. Oh my God. What do you think? It's beautiful. Honey, I love it. Yeah, it the nice. colors and that, um, the galvanized, this is so nice with the concrete. Yeah. Right? It kind of just all... Yeah, I never oh. thought about how that uh, kind of goes with the concrete like that. Yeah, it looks really good. Okay, I'll continue then. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Okay. Concept approved. I added a corner brace between the mid rail to add some rigidity to the ends of the surround. If there's too much movement, I can add another brace to the top rails later, but I, I think it's good enough like this. The next day, I added the panels. Eighth inch spacers lift the panel a bit to center it vertically. I used one inch roofing screws that have a metal and rubber washer. This went quickly and I was done in less than an hour.
I think taking the time to cut the rabbit in the top and bottom rails so the panels are recessed flush is worth the extra time, and we thought it looked pretty sharp. I covered all the tank plumbing in part 2 of this series, but I forgot to add a vent. For this I bought an RV tank vent and added a bug screen. I cut a disc of aluminum window screen and siliconed it to the base of the vent. I'll have links to these parts in the description or in my blog post on my website. Go to manabouttools.com slash tank1200. I cut a hole in the top of the tank with a hole saw, added some silicone to the base of the vent, and attached it with screws. It was pretty hot that day, so the top of the tank had a bit of flexibility. Our shallow irrigation well is over in the corner of the property. It has a water line running under the field toward the house and past the shed. A few years ago when we put in the garden, I tied into this line and installed several hose bibs. I have a pump to pull water from the rainwater tank and send it to the garden. The plan is to turn off the well pump and close its ball valve, then turn on the tank pump so it can take over watering when the drip irrigation timers come on in the garden. The pump will be set up in the shed on the left there, and I'll run a 1 inch water line underground and tie into the garden system. I ran a string between two stakes to mark my trench location. I cut the sod with a spade. And enlisted some help on the other side of the fence by the garden taps. I have to get down to the poly line to see how I'll tie in the rainwater supply to it. There's nothing like digging to remind yourself that you're out of shape and need to up the cardio in your workouts. In part one, I roughed in a one inch white PVC line under the curb and to the corner of the shed. I'll now continue that line up and through the shed wall. This is the supply line from the rainwater tank. A galvanized strap will keep it secure for now. Where this line comes up through the pea gravel, I'll add an elbow and barb fitting.
Then I'll connect this to the ball valve at the bulkhead fitting with some flexible black poly pipe. Next I'll add the line that comes out of the shed from the pump and through the wall. This will have a tap on it as it continues down the wall and underground. Now it's a matter of wrangling a roll of poly pipe into the trench. And I'll rough cut it to length as I lay it in. I'll cut the existing supply line that comes in from the irrigation well and add a T. It's a bit of muscle work to get this to all fit with pipe that's still buried in the ground. Then I can attach the pinch clamps. Then on the shed side, I run the poly pipe into the other barbed fitting and clamp it. All the outdoor plumbing is now done. I bought a half horsepower jet pump with a small pressure tank attached. It came with a 2040 pressure switch, on at 20 psi and off at 40. I'll swap that switch for a 3050 with a low pressure cutoff. This will stop the pump if the tank runs dry or the pressure drops below 20 psi. I'll disconnect the wires, then spin the switch to remove it from the pump housing. I'll need to add a short nipple as the new switch didn't come with one. Since this is a seasonal pump setup, I opted to wire a 110 volt plug to the pump, so I can just plug it into a receptacle in the shed when I need it. So here's a sort of schematic type layout of how I'll plumb in the pump in the corner of the shed. The bottom line comes from the tank and the top line goes to the garden.
I'll add compression couplings and unions to aid in the initial glue-up of the pipe and fittings, and to allow disassembly and draining of the system later. I also have a check valve so water can only flow from the tank and never back to it. Coming out of the pump, I'll add a pressure gauge, a ball valve, a spin-down sediment filter so that can catch any debris from the tank, and then another ball valve. And here's the system installed in the shed. I did add another check valve to ensure I kept water from ever backing up into the pump when I'm switching from irrigation well supply to rainwater tank supply. Now, I'm not a plumber, but I think this will work okay. And that's it. In the next series of videos, I'll detail the setup of our smaller 500-gallon rainwater tank in the garden. Now that's off-grid and that watering system is run by a solar panel on the pavilion, so watch for that coming soon. So take care, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.